In today's video, we're exploring one of the most promising developments in the fight to cure HIV. Ampar's newest push toward alternatives to stem cell transplantation. For decades, curing HIV required the rare CCR5 mutated donor cells used in a handful of successful stem cell transplant cases. But now, new research funded by AMFAR is opening the door to accessible and potentially scalable cures for millions of people worldwide. I encourage you to watch this video all the way to the end. Now, let's get started. Hello and welcome back to the HIVRNATestGuide.com YouTube channel, your trusted source for HIV testing with over 4,500 HIV testing labs across the United States. For more information, check the link in the description of this video or the bio section of our channel. Today we're talking about one of the biggest challenges in medicine, finding a cure for HIV that actually works for everyone. I mean, we know a cure is possible, but the real quest is making it safe, affordable, and available to the millions who need it. All right, here's what we've got on deck. We'll start with what I'm calling the Cures Catch-22. Then we'll dive into three really incredible new research ideas. An immune system transplant without the transplant, a gene editing delivery service, which is as cool as it sounds, and a plan for waking up the hidden virus. And finally, we'll talk about what it all means for finding a cure that can actually be used around the globe. So here's the fundamental problem, right? We have absolute proof that HIV can be cured. That is a massive achievement. But the way we do it right now is so risky and complicated that it's just not an option for almost anyone. To give you some perspective, only seven people on the entire planet have been verifiably cured of HIV. Now, that number is, you know, it's a huge beacon of hope, but it's also a pretty stark reminder of just how far we have to go. Each one is a breakthrough for sure, but it also shows you how rare this kind of success is. And this really lays out the gap we need to close. The current cure method, it's a high risk, super expensive stem cell transplant. It's usually a last resort for cancer patients. What the world actually needs is the polar opposite, something that's accessible, affordable, and practical enough to scale up for global use. And this is where organizations like AMF are, the Foundation for AIDS Research, really step up. For 40 years, they've been pouring resources into the kind of cutting-edge research we need to solve this exact problem. They are all in on finding these practical alternatives. And they're definitely putting their money where their mouth is. AMFAR just announced a new investment, a package of three new grants that add up to $1.3 million, all aimed at exploring some really bold new ways to get to a cure. Now, what I think is so smart about this is how they've divided up the money. It's not one giant bet on a single idea. It's three separate investments in three brilliant scientists, and each one has a totally unique and frankly exciting way of trying to crack this nut. So let's take a look at what they're up to. So first up is Dr. Jonas Sacha. His work is pretty wild because he's trying to get all the benefits of a stem cell transplant, but without actually having to do the dangerous procedure. Dr. Sasha, who's at Oregon Health and Science University, got almost $480,000 to chase this idea, and it's all based on a pretty surprising discovery he made while working with monkeys. Okay, so the core idea here is this thing called allogenic immunity. Basically, after a transplant, the new donor immune cells sometimes attack the patient's body. It's a really dangerous complication called graft-versus-host disease. But Dr. Sacha thinks this aggressive attack also wipes out the patient's cells where HIV is hiding. You know, the HIV reservoir? He thinks that's what actually cured the human patients, not some rare genetic thing. So his goal is to copy that effect. The plan is to take a patient's own killer T cells, the soldiers of our immune system, and basically train them to hunt down and attack the HIV-infected cells. Then they put them back in the body. It's like creating a targeted search and destroy mission for the virus, and it could be a much, much safer approach. Okay, let's move on to the second strategy, which takes us into the really futuristic world of gene editing. Dr. Elena Herrera Carrillo is developing what you could call a genetic delivery service for a cure. She and her team over at the University of Amsterdam were awarded just over $479,000 to build this kind of one-two punch against HIV using CRISPR technology. So here's how this works, and I love the analogies they use. So think of CRISPR as a pair of genetic scissors. These scissors get packed into delivery drones, and these are actually the same kind of lipid nanoparticles they used for the COVID mRNA vaccines. So the drones fly the scissors to the target cells, and then the scissors do two incredible things. 
First, they shut down the gene that HIV uses as a doorway to get into cells in the first place. And second, for cells that are already infected, they literally cut the HIV right out of the cell's DNA. And get this, the early results are amazing. A previous study had a 95% success rate at clearing out latent HIV in a test tube. So the next big step is to see if it works in humanized mice. And what's also really fantastic about this project is its global focus. Dr. Herrera Carrillo is going to train scientists in Uganda to make sure that if this works, the technology can be made in Africa for Africa. All right, on to our third and final strategy. This one from Dr. Alexander Pasternak goes right after the single biggest reason we can't cure HIV, the virus that goes dormant and hides inside our cells. Dr. Pasternak, who's also at the University of Amsterdam, got more than $383,000 to breathe new life into a field of research that's all about waking this hidden or latent virus up. He's working with something called latency reversal agents, or LRAs. And the best way to think of these is like chemical alarm clocks. See, the standard HIV drugs, ART, can't even see the virus when it's dormant. So the LRAs are designed to ring the alarm, wake the virus up, and force it out of hiding. Once it's active again, the ART can finally see it and destroy it. Now, the problem up until now has been that we haven't found an alarm clock powerful enough to wake up the entire hidden reservoir. So the whole point of Dr. Pastanek's work is to try out new combinations of these LRAs, looking for that perfect cocktail that can finally activate all of the dormant HIV, leaving it with absolutely nowhere left to hide. So, okay, let's just zoom out for a second and look at the big picture. We've got three different scientists with three totally different strategies, but every single one of them is pointing toward the same finish line, a path to a practical cure. And this is why it matters so, so much. Right now, there are 39 million people living with HIV across the globe. A cure that only works for a handful of people just isn't a solution. We have to find something that can reach everyone. And I think this quote from Amphar's CEO, Kevin Robert Frost, just nails it. The goal isn't to find some magic bullet overnight. It's about taking these really important tangible steps forward. It's about getting to the next phase of curing more of the people, more of the time, on our way to the ultimate goal of curing most of the people, most of the time. So, what's the big takeaway here? Well, the stem cell cures were amazing because they proved a cure is possible, but they aren't a practical fix for the whole world. And that's exactly why this new research is so critical. Whether it's training our own immune system, using gene editing scissors to literally cut the virus out, or finding the right alarm clock to wake it up, each one of these paths is pushing us closer to the one thing that really matters, a practical, accessible cure for all. And that leaves us with one last, and I think really hopeful, question to ponder. As you look at these different ideas, the immune system trainer, the genetic scissors, the viral alarm clock, which one of these paths do you think holds the most promise for our future?